back to the channel everybody. We have my 06 CRF key and carb here. This is a 40 millimeter. Uh, it's due for a cleaning, <clears throat> so I'm taking it all apart. I am going to uh, soda blast all the parts that can be soda blast. Mainly the outside stuff. Um, all the innards are pretty clean. I'll probably hit this right here. So it's got some grime up in the pulley there. Uh, but the rest of the stuff is all in good condition. I'm gonna switch out the jets and then I'm gonna put it back together. So uh, I figured I'd give you guys, uh, you know, just provide a little video here. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. That way you can come on back to the channel, check out what we got going on. Always appreciate if you hit the like button as well. It helps it out with the growth of the YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so here I have the carburetor body. Um, this is the main portion of the carburetor. Um, I have separated the two halves. Uh, you do have four little rubber seals there for the screws. Uh, there's a main gasket. Um, I've already replaced this gasket, so this one's still good. And then you have the rest of the gaskets as well. Um, but uh, these, this is the bottom portion of, of the carburetor. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit this as well. Um, I got all the screws and everything out of it that will be cleaned in a soda blaster. Um, so you can see all the parts here. I do have two sets of jets. I have my 45 and my 175. And what I discovered is that with a 175 in there and all the parts that I have, running at higher RPMs, I was running lean. So I'm probably gonna go put this 180 in there. I don't have a 178. I may pick one up from a local shop. But I'm going to put the 180 in there for now and then put this 42 Pilot Jet in because it still is running rich. It's 60 degrees, uh, 65 degrees. I was running rich at like one turn out, I believe, on this 45. So I definitely need to go down to a 42. So um, those are going to be put in, like I said. And then, uh, you know, everything's going to be put back together. I do have the uh, Boyus and Quick Start on the carburetor as well still. So I'm going to continue using that. And like I said, you know, there's all the rest of the gaskets. These have all been replaced. So they're all going to be put back into the carburetor. Um, I do, I did have the O-ring mod on this device here. And that is for the accelerator pump. So that's all set up. Uh, I'm not going to really touch anything. Maybe just hit it with a soda blaster, blow it dry, and then uh, get everything put back together. So... We're going to go ahead and get these into the soda blaster and see how they turn out. Okay, I got this stuff all cleaned up. Looks pretty good. So, I was getting ready to put the accelerator pump together here. I already have the diaphragm in. And... You want to check and make sure that your diaphragm is not all tore up. If it is, get a new one. Got the soldering here. Ended up putting a little grease in there. Help it stick. Uh, did the same thing here. And I actually went out and grabbed a bunch of new screws here. All stainless steel. From a local hardware shop. Not hardware, but uh, fastener store. So you want to make sure you got your spring in there. Should be obvious, um, and it sounds a little plain, a little silly, I guess you could say. You can tell when a bolt is getting tight because it's getting tight. You can tell that it's reaching its torque spec because it's getting tight. And when I say, you know, that it sounds silly to say that, it's because it sounds so obvious. But if you're spinning the bolt in or the nut on, you can tell 
that when it starts to get tough, that it'll it's reaching its point of torque spec. And so once it hits that, you only want to give it a little bit more past that. And I'm talking like an eighth of a turn, maybe a quarter turn at the very, very most. And you can do that with pretty much any, any bolt. The bigger they get, the harder it's going to be once they hit that point of torque to get that eighth of a turn in there. All right, so that's that. We can put the adjusting screw back in. This is for the leak jet adjustment. I was at three. I was at uh, three quarter out. Seemed pretty good. So I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of grease, just a hair. This just helps it to spin nicely, and honestly, it. Actually, it does seal it kind of a little bit. You know, it's like you need it though because of the the O ring here. So there's one ring. There's one washer on there. Go ahead and put the spring on there. And then there's a second washer. This is the Boyus and Quick Start device. Like I said, I had this set to three quarters of a turn out. That's seated. Half, three quarter. And I think uh, I've had a, initially, before I put this setup on here, I had a 45 leak jet and it came with a 55 leak jet. So I wanted to get more of a stream in there to alleviate any type of lean bog. And so I went down to a 45 leak jet. Well, on the chart, when you saw the Boyus and quick start it said um i believe it was right around seven eighths of a turn out was your 40 was right around 45 leak jet so once again that's your seated position so half turn three quarter and then half of that is going to get you your eighth so if you're here and here I'm going to be right about there, at least on mine for a 45 might be different for your bike. And this is for a 40 millimeter carb as well. Okay. So if you do have one of these carbs and you do plan on changing your leak jet, uh, the leak jet goes right here. And like I said, mine was a 55. Some of them came with like 65s, I believe. So yeah, a difference between us and a lot of people, when I did research, just reading online about all this stuff of you know, trying to get rid of the bog, which it did pretty good. It's not perfect. I think it would get perfect if I dropped down to the, the 0405 37 millimeter carb. Um, but yeah, you want to pop this out. I have a plug in there because of the boys and quick start. It's just, you take the, uh, I have it in another video, pull a check valve, check valve out of here. And then this gets plugged up right here. So if you do replace your leak jet, you'll take the bowl off, and all you got to do is back the one out that's here, and it's got a flathead slot in it, and then you'll you'll put your new one in. And like I said, I went from a 55 to a 45. And I'm not sure if you guys know this, but if you've ever... Okay, so this little brass tube right there, that brass tube has... There, you can see it. There is a little tiny hole at the end. That's where your accelerator pump squirts fuel out of. Barely see it. At least it's on the screen. There you go. So sometimes that will be hitting this piece right here because it sprays in through here. Well, you'll need to adjust. You'll have to pop. You'll have to separate the top and bottom half and then adjust the angle of that right there. So you just take a screwdriver and, you know, twist it whichever direction you want. And so, yeah, that's how you do that if you ever need to do it. If your stream's not right, that's what you'll need to do. So we have our gasket.
And then there's four more gaskets as well. And they just go around the four screw holes. I'm going to clean this out actually. There's a little bit of gunk. Not gunk, it's just powder. And then there are four in each one of these holes. All right, there's those. Thumbs working pretty good. Ram Jam Sportsplex in Lorain, Ohio in December. And went down. And mostly ruptured my EPL tendon, which is Extensor Pollis's Longus. And it's the tendon. The end bone in your thumb is called the distal bone. And you have a tendon that comes up the middle of the top of your thumb right right there you can see that's it right there and it comes up through what's called a, a pulley I believe is what they call it and it's just a little bit of tendon cartilage stuff that goes over and these two go you have two tendons one that attaches to the base of this uh, flange right here. Uh, I think it's a phalange bone or something like that. And then, uh, which is this this tendon, and then your EPL goes up, and then as it gets to the this this joint right here, it actually fans out, and it attaches from here to here of the end of this bone, and that's what allows you to get your extension. And then there's a flexor tendon on the bottom side really amazing though but i ruptured it almost you know so if it's if it's fanned across you know like that i ruptured this whole section to about right here and i could just barely get a little bit of upward movement out of it and i had to get it splinted for six weeks and then did like two weeks of therapy and it's still got a bulge to it but there's you know there's still a little bit of swelling just a hair of swelling there still and a little bit of scar tissue, but yeah, it's good to go. All right, so now that I got those four in, I go back and tighten them up. Just give them a good twist. Same thing. Next, next thing we're going to do here. And yeah, you know what? I don't know if I showed you guys this. That piece broke off, and it's just that much that broke off this was when i first got the bike and i heard like a click and i was like what the heck is that noise and sure enough that little piece right there popped off i have it somewhere but that there's nothing i can really use to even put it back on but you know what? i've had it off this whole time it doesn't affect anything so i'm not worried about it so we have the starter jet here it goes right in here and the starter jets on these are what one oh 68 68 almost said 135 that's what my 800 is <laughs> so you just screw it in until it stops right there and just give it a little tweak and i'm going from a 45 down to a 42 pilot 42. That one goes in here. Obviously, you want to make sure it's nice and clean. Then you have your needle jet. Once again, once it stops, just give it a little tweak. And then I had a 172 in here, or I'm sorry, 175, and it was running lean at top end because I have the uh, FMF Mega Bomb pipe on there and the big gun exhaust, and it's slightly ported. So 
equal to 180. I don't have a 178, so that's why I'm doing that. But I know a guy that runs a 190 on stock everything. <laughs> and, you know, if anything, might not have perfect top end power, but it'll keep it cool, that's for sure. Because the fuel will help to keep things cooler. That's why things get so hot when you're running leagues. There's not enough fuel to cool things down. And I noticed the last time I was out when it was only 55 degrees that the radiator, I almost burned my stinking hand on the radiator. So there's all that in there. So we can go ahead, put the valve in. And there are bearings on the inside here. I'm going to make sure those are both greased real well. I'm going to go ahead and get me out a brand new brush. Welcome to the party. And I like to just wipe it clean. And then we have two washers here when you're putting in the uh, valve slide arm. You got a nylon one and then a stainless steel. That's one. Clean these rollers off. Oh, crap. I forgot a couple gaskets. Those go on the inside. It's because I'm too busy talking. If I remember correctly, these actually, these are security screws. So they have a little pin that's in the middle. Well, I ended up breaking mine off. That way I didn't have to deal with all that security nonsense. But now I got a set of security bits. <laughs> yep. All right. Now we can put it back together. Lighting sucks, sorry. There you go. Now we're cooking with grease. Or heat, <laughs> now we're cooking with butter. I think it's heat. Now we're cooking with flames. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do now is put this, this guy back in. I think I'm going to get another. This one seems okay. I'm just going to put a new one on there. Just like that. And this is actually a Vitten. I believe that's how you say it. Um, O-ring and they are made for gasoline and whatever and so they, they're pretty tough they're stretchy but they're tough and then there's a washer that goes over this and a C-clip And we got our 
push rod here for the accelerator pump. It goes up through here. Like this. And that just helps it. We'll go ahead and put our slide in. This one's brand new. It's already getting a little wear on it, but I don't even know if I needed it when I initially did it. Okay, so when you put these together, um, you see the, the two similar shapes. Well, you want a square bottom to this. So you actually put it in <sighs> to where the hole is down at the bottom. Just like that. Then you got one of these that kind of usually slips off. So count for that. Then what you want to do is you want to take your nylon washer and that actually goes in first. And then your steel washer. And then you get your pulley and your Spring here. See how it hooks? We're just going to hook that on there. And we have the throttle valve lift arm. Want to get your spring lined up. And you get your retaining screw. This is actually the better one. got to be very careful when you do this. All right. Now the last thing to do for this process here, your throttle position sensor. Now this 
has a gasket on the outside here. And when you take this off, I probably should have noted this, but I use this little casting line here and then I drew a line directly across it. Right there. So you can take a little tiny bit of grease. Grease that up. And you want to line those two up perfectly. And then you can put just a hair blue Loctite. Get it started. Right there. Perfect. Okay. And we have our hot start plunger here, which has actually just been deactivated because of the boys and quick start. I've wondered if this design wasn't the best because on the inside of this hot start bore, and yeah, that is cleaned out. It fits in there and it's kind of tight, but it's, you know, it's not perfect. And maybe it's just, there's such a little bit of an air leak that it's not really even that big of a deal. But there's no gasket in there. That's what I'm getting at. Oh, you know, I forgot. Okay, we'll do that in a minute. Forgot this little guy. All right, so we got that in. You can go ahead and put the cap back on. Just two pieces here. Just have a round gasket. Again, just give it a little bit of a tweak. Go ahead and put the hot start plunger in. That just consists of the spring and this plug for the boy that Voyason provided. Now we'll put the choke plunger in. That doesn't take much. Forget one thing here. We'll go ahead and put in this is the air jet, it's a 100, it goes on this side here. Here's that trick again you back it out until you hear it click. 
right there. Okay, it stops right there. Just give it a little tweak. Now we can go ahead and put our float and valve back in. Valve. And this just slips right over this tab here. Just like that. And you have this little pin slips in through the side. Now when you check your float, all you want to do is just have it fall to where it stops and it should be level with the mating surface of the bowl. But you also measure it, it's supposed to be I believe six millimeters on these. That's pretty much it for this part, got the rest of it done. So the last thing I'm doing here is I'm prepping this fuel screw to go back in. Um, it looked kind of shabby, and it may look shabby now, but uh, what I did is I went and sanded off the garbage around there, and then I ended up, uh, I, pun I just took a little tiny screwdriver, punched two marks for the number two. I didn't put anything on three yet, uh, but then I put something on four. Uh, I made like a little four. <laughs> and then a one so that'll get me by till my new fuel screw comes um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of paint and a toothpick and see if I can't get uh, see if I can't get some black marks in here just gonna use a little 2x paint primer gloss black spray a little bit in there I'm just gonna dip the tip in here it's like the woods just soaking it up Good grief. I don't know if that's going to work. Well, let's try something else. Should be good enough for now. All right, so I'm going through my little bag to try and find one of these springs for the fuel screw here. And I found a couple of them. And you never guess what I found. Look at that. And guess what size? 178. <laughs> so I'm going to keep that out. I don't know if I'm going to actually use it right now. I'm going to see how the 180 does for now. 
Um, go from there, I guess. The way that these go on, so you get your spring, then your washer, and then your O-ring. You can even see the little hole in there. And what I like to do, like normal, you know me. I'll put a little smidgen of grease on there. And you want to wipe it off. Not off the whole ring, but off the bottom. Half, one, half, three quarter. There's one other thing I want to try and find. So what I did is I screwed this all the way in and counted how many um, turns in till it's seated. And so that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to turn this all the way in. I'm going to pop this off real quick. All right. So it's not turning anymore. What I did is I just took the pressure off of it. We'll do that again. Then what I did is just back this out. Okay, so half, one, half, Two, half, three, half, four, half, five, and a half. It's right about where I was before. So, and then I'll be able to fine tune it, but that'll get me back to where I approximately was. So that should be good. All right, so I was going to use this one. This is my old one, but that, that paint's wearing off. It could be used, you know. It can be used, but I don't want it on there. So I got myself a package. Oh yeah, that'll give it a little bit of bling. That's a pretty one. All right, she's seated right there. So that's what I'll see. It's the four. Half. One. Half. Three quarter. <laughs> right on the three for three quarter. Because that's what I'll see the most. When you're looking at the side so good deal that is a nice looking one i like it so that's it okay so i just got some keepers in the mail actually i think they're called binders brand spanky new genuine suzuki parts one six one seven eight Dash M E N dash eight five one, all the same part number. I got two of these bikes. I'm gonna end up rebuilding the other one. So check check out the channel and subscribe. Hit the alert bell that way you can see that one come together when that one's that series starts. That's 2007. That needs a head and uh, needs to be gone through. That's for sure. I'll probably end up just building that one stock though. But it'll get all new plastics, all cleaned up, bearings, whole nine yards. So I got a second set of these for that one as well. So we're going to go ahead and put these on real quick.
that is it folks so if you're not subscribed to the channel hit the subscribe button and the alert bell that we can come on back check out what we got going on like i said we're always doing something here we got all kinds of things we're fixing to ride them so and if we ride them we're probably gonna have to fix them again so <laughs> and riding season's coming up here gonna start having more motocross videos coming up so don't forget to smash the like button always appreciate that so we'll see you guys in the next video take care come on back and of course god bless